Good evening. This is a very special night for graduates, and congratulations to all the members of the class of 2015 for achieving your goal for a college education. Good luck in your future academic endeavors and your careers. You've earned the right to have a large smile on your face and be proud of your achievement. I have the distinguished honor to introduce tonight's student speaker from the class of 2015. This graduate candidate was not only successful in his academic discipline, but achieved honors and recognition for his activities outside the formal structure of the classroom. Your speaker is a student ambassador in the Wellness Center, served as a supplemental instructor and peer tutor for numerous chemistry courses, and has the distinction of being one of the original resident hall assistants for JCC during this past academic year. During his tenure at SUNY Jefferson, he was named to both the President's and Dean's list. In his spare time, he's an avid photographer and received honorable mention for the Best of College and High School Photography Contest by having one of the top 100 photographs out of 16,000 submissions. His other hobbies include hiking and he enjoys running. In the future, the soon-to-be JCC alum will be continuing his education at Oswego, majoring in chemistry. Without further ado, it's a great pleasure to introduce class of 2015 graduate candidate, Hollis Harrington, as your student commencement speaker. Members of the stage party, faculty, friends, family, and the graduating class of 2015. While preparing for the speech, I read that you should write about something you love, something that's helped you overcome numerous problems, or someone that's always been there for you. Now, thankfully, I ignored that advice, or else this speech would be about my trusty TI-83 calculator. Now, that aside, I have learned one thing in particular from my years at Jefferson. It's okay to fail from time to time. Now, don't let this podium fool you. I have failed just as much, if not more, than anyone else in here. My first semester GPA was an astonishing 1.7. Now, in my defense, it takes a surprising amount of effort to consistently choose nap time over going to class. However, this was also the semester I learned what an F, W, and Y can do to your transcripts. I'm sure Student Records still has a most wanted poster with my face hanging in their office. And, okay, yep, yeah, we'll go back then. <laughs> so it's been through my own personal experience of trial and a lot of error that I've learned how to turn failure into success. Some days we're going to wake up and things won't go our way. We won't pass that test, we won't get hired for that new job, and our car won't start. And all of that is okay because none of it will cause the end of the world. What really matters is how we're going to fix those failures. Lead a study group to help yourself and others pass the next test. Not getting that job leaves you with more time to improve yourself so the next interview goes significantly better. And if your car won't start, get on a bike and start pedaling, which is something I personally had to do. See, my first year of college, I didn't have a car. I ended up biking to class every day until the snow fell. Now, this may seem minor, but I live in Rodman. Round trip, the distance is 20 miles, and I would do that rain or shine. And as impossible as I thought it was, my grandfather was right. It is uphill both ways. <laughs> the only thing that's not okay is sitting in that failure and feeling sorry for ourselves. Playing the role of a victim gets us no closer to success. 
Fate did not cause our suffering, we did. Now, thankfully, if you're in the crowd hearing this tonight, then you're not the kind of person who accepts failure. Working through the night, skipping social gatherings, doing one more problem, that's our class, and our diploma is our badge of honor. So tonight, relax, enjoy yourselves, and get rested up, because tomorrow we begin taking on the problems and responsibilities of those who came before us. There are people in faraway countries whose name I can't even pronounce that are waiting for our nurses. Crime-ridden boroughs needing more police officers and life-saving devices that need to be designed by engineers. And it's our duty to help them. Author Les Brown once said, the graveyard is the richest place on earth because it is here that you will find the hopes and dreams that were never fulfilled. The books that were never written, the songs that were never sung, the inventions that were never shared, the cures that were never discovered, all because someone was too afraid to take that first step, to keep with the problem, or determined to carry out their dream. Don't quit when it gets too hard. Don't stop when you fail. We must find another way because denying the world our generation's dream is selfish. It is only through these failures that innovation and success can be born. However, I'm confident that if you're walking across the stage tonight, then you won't let us down. The man or woman who seeks self-improvement improves the world in the process. It's been an honor being a small part of your wonderful life today, but we have work to do. Thank you. Thank you, Hollis. Great job. What a wonderful representative you are of the graduating class and how proud we are of your accomplishments. I'm still trying to figure out what it says on your mortarboard, Hollis. I couldn't tell. 